Yes, I know I'm in the bed, but this is part two of this video. I apologize for the just inconvenience of me having to upload this into a three-parter than just uploading the whole thing. Like I mentioned before in the last video, uh, I don't, I do this for a hobby. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really care too much about views and likes and stuff, but it will go a long way if you guys supported me, you know, because I'm trying to be out here and do all this stuff for you guys. But anyway, hope you guys enjoy the rest of these videos. Hi, you probably didn't expect to see me again. Uh, apparently, I lost some of the footage to the other video that I was recording about a few weeks ago, so I have to re-record shit again. I know, it's ridiculous, it's crazy, my laptop is f***ing up on me, and I have to talk about some of these albums again, but that's okay, fine. As long as I can just talk about these albums quickly and just get to where I need to get, I should be okay. I'm so sorry this video is a mess, guys. I really wanted to give you guys a great-ass video, but unfortunately, my luck has just crumbled down the ground. So let's just get this over with so it'll be less time for me to edit. All right. Um, next, we have Beyonce's with Lemonade. I love this album. And what's cool is if you smell the, uh, the CD, it smells like lemons. So that's really freaking cool. Plus, uh, there's a side where you tell the CD and then there's a, a, the DVD where you can watch the film of Beyonce and the visuals and everything like that. I love this album. It talks about uh, femininity, womanhood, her infidelity with Jay-Z, and plus black empowerment. Plus, uh, she has a little bit of social commentary into this. I didn't listen to this album when it originally came out, but I was able to get a copy of this 2018 and I love it and I'm so happy that I got it. Travis Scott with Rodeo. Now, I didn't think I would give Travis Scott the light of day at all. And, you know, he is a fantastic producer. He's a protege of Kanye. The production on here is fantastic. So all these tracks on here are fantastic. And I gotta give props to Travis Scott for making one of the best trap albums of the 2010s. So, Denzel Curry with Taboo. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. By me, he's a fantastic uh, Florida rapper. Love this guy's energy, love this guy's concepts, love this guy's wordplay metaphors. He's such a talented artist. If you guys don't know about Denzel Curry, please get him reacquainted because he is doing a damn thing out here. You dig what I'm saying? Now, next thing we have is Tyler the Creator with Wolf. I love this album a lot. It speaks to my creative teenage angst self, you know what I'm saying? I love the visuals on here, you know what I'm saying? Tyler the Creator. If you don't know who Tyler the Creator is, you probably are living under a rock. This is personally my favorite album of his because it kind of just speaks to my more awkward side of things than any of his other albums, even though they are critically his best, but these are just my personal favorites, so, you know. Next we have is Pusha T with Daytona. Y'all know, if you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? 2018 was a crazy year for Pusha T with Drake and you know what I'm saying, with the beef and everything like that. This is a great album produced by Kanye. And I wish Kanye went on his producer bag a little bit more with this. Um, but you know, you know, Kanye's doing his little thing with his gospel, you know what I'm saying? But Pusha T, great artist. Um, so I wish I knew him a little bit more uh, with, you know, Eclipse and got a little bit more affiliated. But this album really opened my eyes and ears into Pusha T's uh, discography. Next, we have another Travis Scott album, which is Road, I said Rodeo, which is Astro World, which came out 2018. Uh, this was a really pretty good album. Not as good as that is a uh, re uh, Rodeo, in my opinion. Birds was kind of shit, but this one's a return to form. And I, of course, I got the night cover, you know what I'm saying? If you went on his website, there's a lot of great tracks off of here, man. This is a good album from Travis. So props out to Travis for this. Next we have is Logics with Young Sinatra 4. This is apparently an album, not a mixtape. This came out about a while ago, about 2018-ish. Um, I like this album. A lot of people kind of have their mixed uh, feelings about this album, but I like it. Uh, you know, this is kind of logic return to form a little bit. You know, he's spitting his ass off, you know what I'm saying? This is, this is a guilty pleasure for me. So if you guys don't like it, I like it. I had to cop it, you know what I'm saying? Some of the instrumentals here are freaking dope as fuck, especially the title track, so. Next we have is Open Mike Eagle with, um, where do you, well, uh, 
what happens when I try to relax? This is a great vintage, you know, underground artist from the underground artist himself. You dig what I'm saying? Just basically going down all the things that, well, he does when he tries to relax. He gets distracted and stuff, and he has a lot of great witty wordplay plus humor as well, too, to go along with it. It's a really good, good album. It's about, it's an EP, actually. It's about six tracks. It'll last you about 20 or so minutes. This is a good listen. You should go and get it. Next is Earl Sweatshirt with some rap songs. The brevity on this is fantastic. I love how Earl captured everything he wanted to say within about 25 minutes and every song on there is like a minute or third long and I can't believe how it is how uh, short it is Earl Sweatshirt did a damn thing on here I love this album it's one of my favorite albums of all time end of that year got me through a lot in college when I was kind of going through my little thing so Earl Sweatshirt props to you for his three-year hiatus a lot of people didn't like this album but I freaking love it because I was already ex uh known to experimental lo-fi and a lot of Armand Guard and you know kind of um off kilter uh, music by uh, by other artists, so you know, love this album. Really enjoyed it. Enjoyed this album. Earl Sweatshirt is the man. Next, we have this Drake's "Take Care." If you guys know this album, you guys know. You know, headlines. Take care with Rihanna. Um, hell yeah, fucking ride the motto. You know what I'm saying? This album is a freaking classic. Well, somewhat, it could be a cult classic as well, too. This really put Drake on the map as well as Take Care as well, too. This guy, this is probably his best album as far as his albums are concerned, you know what I'm saying? This guy was doing his thing, his R&B thing, his rap thing, so I have to go and cop this album because it is, it holds a lot of nostalgic weight for me, so. Next we have is If You're Reading This Is Too Late, which is his best project, you know what I'm saying? Like, as far as, like, projects go, but um, unfortunately, this is a mixtape, so, you know. But, you know, titled with all the 17 tracks, plus it has two bonus tracks as well, too, so that's cool. This is probably his most confident and most boldest album that he's ever released, and I really wish that this Drake came back because he was really rapping, plus he was giving you a blend of R&B that was actually really good and not really, like, drowned out, so if we can get this at Drake back, please give me this Drake back because I really, really really want it back next we have is lauren hill with the myth education of lauren hill which is her first and only last project i don't know why she doesn't make another album but that's okay to me miss lauren hill is one of my favorite neo soul um, artists that came out around the 90s early 2000s i grew up listening to this album so i had to go and get my own physical copy of this album because it just holds so much nostalgic weight for me with x factor and you know walk that thing you know what i'm saying if you guys know i love this album and the desk you know the little album cover talking about you know referring back to the album it's a good album good album great album actually a classic actually uh erica badu with baduism i got into erica badu about last year-ish um i went to a, a record store and, and they just had her uh her cd there and i just wanted to go and get it so i got it plus i also got mama's gun which i kind of had ordered from M amazon after i listened to this this album is fantastic it's a, one of those things where you share your thing with, with cocoa boy about her and you kind of light an incense you kind of smoke mad blunts and just get <sighs> faded and high off of life is one of those albums that you just need to really get you know in tune with if you dig what i'm saying you feel me and then this album is a really really great album as well too i feel like this album is better than this album because this is more a little bit kind of chill on the chill side this is more bold this is more erica on her bag you feel what i'm saying the production on there is loud it's bold it really makes a statement about her and herself and i my favorite uh, uh my favorite track off of here green eyes if y'all know who y'all know how i love that album i mean yeah that uh that track but anyway great album please get into it erica badu if you are younger please next is all of three anonymous projects that if you guys don't know who anonymous is he is a southern rapper from south florida you dig what i'm saying he's an underground rapper that has been doing his thing for about a couple of years now and i recently started getting into him around 2014 so when i was 14 years old and then, you know, I had to, you know, tune into his music. Until then, I've been an avid supporter since then. He is a fantastic artist. He's kind of like Denzel Curry in a way where he kind of had that aggressive, very like sharp wordplay. Plus the flows are insane. The instrumentals are insane. Plus he produces his own tracks as well too. You guys need to get in tune with Anonymous. You know what I'm saying? You guys will not regret any of his music. So yeah, this is Vice City, which is his first album. Really great album. 
uh, from him and honestly it was my favorite album of 2016 so y'all know <laughs> he needs a part of gi gaming illuminati with tbh and you know uh ethos and everything like that plus this is ep with your meshi which is a great ep it also has kerobar freestyle if you get the physical so that's really awesome um i didn't get this one signed but that's okay this is a great ep and it's well re worth your time plus it has a lot of your meshi you know yu yu hockey show reference uh, references plus the tracks are actually titled as the characters so you know take it out for how it is and then this is his uh i think his ep as well too this is uh this is no there is no threat plus this has denzel curry on here he produced most of this uh album so that's really ep so that's really really cool uh so yeah get into with anonymous he's a great rapper and you guys should know him Next we have is Layla, with, Layla Hathaway with Self Portrait, a great Neo Soul project that actually now is the sample the song off of here, which is called On Your Own. He sampled that song with uh, Mama from To Be Butterfly with Kendrick Lamar, so I had to go and get this album. This album is actually surprisingly really, really good. You know, really well, well sung. Layla did her thing with this album, and I really do appreciate her and what her producers were going to do, uh, doing on this album. So if you guys haven't listened to it already, it's a really nice, mellow, and relaxing R&B project. Next we have is Lil Sims with Grey Area, which she's from the UK. She has a lot of great, great, great songs and cuts off of here. It's really, you know, I don't even know how to say it, like how to explain it. It's very visceral, it's very abrasive, it's very, you know, personal as well too. She tackles, tackles a lot of topics from like, um her own hometown and then plus like you know her own personal life like her 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 folks here are fantastic man she is a great female mc and you guys need to know more about uh little sims so you know what i'm saying yes next we have is anderson pop with Mal I said malibu with um what is this album? Ventura has the Andre 3000, Ro uh, Smokey Robinson, Layla Hathaway, Devin Sullivan, uh, Brandy, and Nate Dogg on here. This is a great, fantastic art, uh, fantastic album from uh, Anderson Pop. He's a jack of all trades. He all uh, produces. You know, he sings, he raps. He's a little funk. He's a little bit of jazz. He's a, he's a lot of jack of all trades. Please get into Anderson Pop if you hasn't been already. Next we have is Michael Jackson's with Off the Wall. This is a off the wall project. <laughs> this is I don't know why this is broken, but whatever. This is easily one of my favorite Michael Jackson projects by far. I and mean, you know, I, I just there's just no debate to that. Like that album, this album is fantastic. Like I love Michael Jackson in that era of music. Not near the thriller and bad and you know all those other albums. But this one gets my damn pants cranky, you feel me? Next we have is Ariana Grande with uh oh, this is the upside down. With Thank You Next. I'm not a big Ariana fan, but I love this project because you got really personal on here. Talking about Nate Peterson and uh Mac Miller, rest in peace. And really getting a lot of personal on this album. And I can really appreciate Sis for really getting her in her bag and really making some pop and great pra uh, great pop tracks that really, you know, resonated with me. So thank you, Ariana Grande. Um you make this 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 one was a hitter. Next we have a, is another anonymous project with Chiz. Before the night is over, this came out this year. Thank you for the signed copy again. I'm telling you, I'm an avid supporter for this guy because I wouldn't buy CDs if I didn't like the guy that I was listening to. So guys, get in tune with Anonymous. It's a short, nice five-track EP, which is somewhat of an R&B and some really banging uh, bangers as well too. So it's like a mix of all of both bags. So you get what you get with that uh, with that EP. So listen to that. Next we have this common with um, with B. Produced all by Kanye West. You dig what I'm saying? A lot of great esoteric and a lot of great, awesome, witty wordplay and metaphors and similes with this album. Common really got into his bag and the instrumentals that Kanye laced off with him. Fantastic dude. Like, Common, underrated, and I don't think people talk about him as a lyricist all that much. He gets into his bag a lot. Next we have is uh, The Black Messiah with uh, D'Angelo and The Vanguard. Uh, this has been like 14, 13 years since, so like, you know, this guy came out with an album, some vid uh, voodoo. God damn, man. Dude, this is a fantastic album um, that has a lot of great hits, a lot of great moments. And I just don't understand why a lot of people do not uh, listen to this album or talk about this album all that much. Everybody knows about, you know, Brown Sugar and Voodoo and everything like that, but not this, this album? Nah, barely anyone talks about this album. So it's a great avant-garde, 
Uh, it's sort of an uh, experimental R&B album. He has a really weird voice, but that's what I really like about him. He has that little thing to him that kind of appeals to me. Next, we have is The Weeknd with Trilogy that has all of his mixtapes, which is House of Balloons, Echoes of Silence, and Thursday. I did not just, I started listening to this album, I mean, this little collection this year during COVID, around the time of since co when COVID was about to hit the ground. And I really love this. Uh, got me through a lot this year. Actually, um, it's actually my highest playing album, uh, highest playing album of this year. Weekend's actually one of the, uh, it's actually my number one uh, played artist of this year because this man got me through a lot of dark shit during COVID and shit. So I'm so happy that I got into this record. I bought this this year. I know it came out years ago, but I'm glad that I got into it now. And the last video I have to talk about is Logic's With No Pressure, one of my favorite albums of this year. Really came back. You know, Under Pressure was my favorite, but No Pressure is the best. Plus, I love the album cover. Shout out to the man, uh, Sam Spratt, for always providing Logic with the dopest album covers ever. Man, my man's was spinning, getting to getting to his rapper bag, and then plus, really like ending his career with a really good note. Now, Log, I haven't been a fan with Logic projects, but that one in particular was really, really good. I got some cassettes that I wanted to share with you guys, plus they're really short. So yeah, this is Tyler the Creator with Igor. Igor, oh, Igor is fantastic, man. It's a great album, man. I need to get into Tyler the Creator if you haven't already. What's wrong with y'all? Get to the program. All right, this is a cassette. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Jayla for giving me this cassette. I didn't buy it, but I appreciate the gift and the consideration because she knows I love Tyler the Creator a lot. And this is live, which is L I V dot E. Um, couldn't wait to tell you, which is a great album guard, R&B kind of smooth, chill jazz album. Um, you know, if you guys know about, lit, you know, live, you gotta go and get to her, you know what I'm saying? She is fire, she's fine. That's all the albums, I got to that really quickly. Hopefully there is no more technical difficulties after this and you guys will get the final, you know, little thing by Tuesday, you know what I'm saying? I'm so sorry guys, I just wanted to make this video really special for you. But, you know how it is. This year has been terrible. Hope you guys enjoyed it, that. Um, so be on the lookout for the next part. And I'll see you guys then. Peace.